Welcome back. So we could keep testing here and uh, just another test right here that I I just have a button per item. So pretty much the same thing. I make 100 items right here. I go in and I detect them all. I add the promise right here. Uh, sorry, the observable with the list of products. I detect the changes and it'll build the view for me. I go in and I find the buttons now and I expect that the list item minus the first button. Notice I do a slice right here and that just means remove everything in my case from the first position. So in my case, I have something like this. Let me try and show you. Right now, the array would look something like this. I won't put in all 100, but the first button would have the plus, and then the first delete button would come up, right? So delete would be there, and the second delete button would be there, etc., etc. So this is kind of how it would look. Now I slice this, and I say, I don't want to start at position zero. I want to instead start at position one. And that pretty much means that the array that comes out is going to remove this guy from the list. And then he's going to go all to the way to the end of the list and keep that. So that's the new list you have right here using the slice, just removing the zeroth index. And that pretty much means that now the list item should be exactly 100 delete buttons. And if that is the case, I say the test passes. So if I scroll further down, here's something else. I'm saying that I expect that I should show one product name and ID in a span. Now, if you look at the HTML, I expect that for each of my products, I have this span right here, and that span contains the name for the product, right? And then it contains the actual these two minuses and then the ID for the product. Now, we could do this differently. I just made it simple right here, but you could be a lot more specific than what I'm doing right here. But let's try and have a look in the code again. Again, we start out by getting um, just a simple product right here with this name, etc. We go and we get that product and put it in inside the observable, like we did last time. We fix it. We detect changes using the fixture, and then we start looking for spans. So anything with the span tag, and in this case, we have a single span tag now because we have a single product. Sweet. So we get that span item. We we expect that that span length should be exactly one. Again, we only have a single span right here, right? Only one, because we only have one product. So let's go back, and then we expect that the first span item is the one we're looking for. We're converting it into an HTML span element, so we can start getting text content. And we expect that text content right here to be the product name plus the minus minus in the middle plus the product ID, pretty much just being the exact same thing you're seeing right here. So it's just a test that this span now contains that exact information. Again. Pretty simple when you start writing these tests. And again, if you did a test driven right here, you could start by creating the test and then adding the span later. It's so easy when you start doing test driven development to get this overview and to figure out, again, from a specification from a customer, what should actually show up, how should it look. Simple one right near, here with a span, but that might be a lot more complex, like with a card inside Bootstrap or something like that. So you would have to have these five things in that card to make it work, and you could test all of that and you could actually drive that by testing first, failing, then putting in the span or whatever you need to make it work, right? Pretty amazing stuff. Now, if we put in five products, I just made another loop right here. We put in five products just for the fun of it. Then I expect that there's actually five spans now. And then for each of the spans, I expect them to look the same. So again, you can go and check out the code, very simple stuff. And that's pretty much the end right here for these simple tests that I wanted to show you guys. That was, um, 20 pretty amazing tests that gave you a lot of good information, actually only 19, sorry, that gave you a lot of great information about your actual view right here. And you can do a lot more because I kind of just scratched the surface. You could start figuring out, and we'll do that later, what would happen if I click the button. I'm going to make that as the next video. So we are almost there in testing how this should look. We also need to test the image, right? That we get an image that's exactly 2424 right now. So there's still a lot you can do and test in this piece of code right here. Some of the things might be overkill, but it's up to you. The more you test, the easier it is to kind of get errors when you make mistakes, right? So, but that's it for this lesson. Now you guys know again a little bit more about testing um, and we'll just continue putting in some more tests as we continue this tutorial. See you next time. Have fun.